folks. And it's going to be the showdown between two chronographs of the Polter range. Two to more to the collection. See you down there. Okay, first one up is this lovely, this is the flagship Pulsar. Now, that's been stuck in a velvet bag for ages. Sat there earlier, I just finally put it all together. The size of that crown. Isn't that the biggest crown you've ever seen? I mean, wow. This is a YM62. This is the alarm version. Um, I haven't set the alarm up because, like, you know, I'm not really a fan of alarms when I don't need them. This is a very, very unusual design of watch. If you see the round, light lined bits, that actually is held in. See the four screws? Whereas the case back itself is absolutely solid and is fixed to the strap, and you lift the whole assembly out in like a cell. whole thing just pops out. I'll, sh I'll show you on the other one, because I nicked the screws out of this one, because the screws are good on it. Oh. But this one I'm working on, I'm actually working on as well, so here we go. Oh. As you can see, there's there's the cell that the movement sits into, and then you like it slides in, All right? And just, you screw it down. Now I've got all I now got to do is get a handset for this one. Right, as you can see, it just comes on out like that. And there's the alarm buzzer on the back. Uh, I've got a YM62 coming from Cousins. Now all I've got to do is go through my other, um, what's it, my other like uh, SII uh, chronographs. Let me tell you what model this is, I keep forgetting. Yes, it's a YM62 X156. This is what this is the best that Pulsar ever made. This this is their best, best. You know, it's very you know it's, it's very futuristic. It's got absolutely amazing design cues and uh, its functionality is amazing. Like it is a little bit slow there. But I, I need to set the time properly using the International Atomic Time. And it's a chronograph as well. If you watch the sec main second hand, there she goes. It's not a fast, fast one. It just goes round on the high hand. Press stop. Bottom button. Resets. I don't know if this has got splits. Yes, it has got splits. See, I've pressed the bottom button and it's pit now. Watch it ping round. See, so it's quite a sophisticated old movement. This is and reset. There we go. Now they make a Y a VX forty two version of this particular one. Would you believe? The other one it is a YM62 X185. Well, this is a 156. Excuse me. There we go. It's not its original strap, sadly. But it will do until I can find one. I love the chocolate brown sunburst. That is just, it's just brilliant. Uh, yeah, look, at if you look at something else as well, how many times do you see a modern Seiko quartz with a date lens? 
the VX42 version of this, which is just a standard analog with the, in the same setting, so it doesn't have chronograph buttons, but it also has that same date lens. And there you go. Now, as you can see, the the bottom clock is like you know still is working at its own time. And what you do is you set the the alarm, and then you set it to the time you want it to show. And then like it'll go around when it gets to it, it goes off, and then you press a button, and it'll like you know it pings off again. That is, I mean, just look how much presence that's got. I mean, that is like I don't know, it's like Space Invader on your wrist, isn't it? Look at the size of that crown. That's that's exactly the same size as an AG12 set battery cell. So there we go. YM62 X156. In all its glory, the very best pulsar made. I don't know if there's a Seiko version of this. I haven't seen very much of this. These are rare as rocket on droppings. So as this is a battle of the Seiko group poke chronographs. There goes the flagship. And here comes another flagship. Oh, I can't remember what the bloody um, pole... Oh, I'll have to look this one up. It's another pulsar. Came to me on a... Where is this strap for this? It came to me on this strange car tyre tread strap, which I didn't like and immediately hated. And the same day that it's arrived, this um, Kahuna strap turned up. And I thought to myself, why not? Now, ideally, this Kahuna strap would look lovely on this one here. But I can't see how I would manage to work that. So I don't think I can. All right. Now, this one has got... A slightly different movement they are identical in size shape and format except for the bottom dial now on the um, 156 the bottom dial was a clock and an alarm all right but this one it has a chronograph when it gets to focusing all right it's a basically it's a 24 hour it's a 12 hour chronograph as that goes around, see you've got five seconds at the top and fifths, one fifth of a second. All right, and as that goes around, that clock at the bottom will go all the way around 12 hours, measuring 12 hours. So this is more for like, you know, useful for like navigation or something like that. It's got splits. Got perpetual sets and seconds on the left. Like his other one, it is 100 meters. Like good. All right. If I remember rightly, on these ones, it should actually stop um, stop spinning the top one at a minute. No, nope, it's still going. Oh, that's so the other YM92 I've got, it does. And you press stop. Now look, watch the bottom, see? It's counting back to the 12 mark. Bing! <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? So. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to leave it on that. I'm quite happy with that. I've got the Epson um, YM92 on um, a cuff as well. Uh, it's not the first one I've got. Uh, it tells nice time. Right. It's a nice, clean, you know, functional wallpiece. And it's got the tachymeter. I've got. I've still got to do some cleaning and polishing on this one. I've got to do some cleaning and polishing on the other one. So there we go. Pull that one off. So two 
very very sophisticated um, Seiko group chronographs the one on the left is seriously you won't see many of these around I uh, you know I mean they really are that rare They're, they do them in a black dial and a silvery white dial as well uh, but I think this chocolate brown is the nicest it's just so eye-catching uh, I do like Seiko groups um, chocolate brown and the one on the right, I, I like that. I, I have a Seiko, I have a Pulsar chronograph all day long. Like right, this, I mean, I've got absolutely loads of these Pulsars now, like, you know. So, what else have I been working on? I've been working on this. I managed to finally get the last magnets out of it. It was very, very magnetized for some reason. Uh, still going strong. Still looking good. I was toying with the idea of a swap. Cause see, these uh, radio rooms were actually for the um, 060 body. Now I've got that 060, um, uh, no that 160 rather. I've got that 160 and um, I was thinking of swapping that, just just literally tipping the movement out of that one into this one, like and the case back, and then swapping them over. Then that would be a proper radio room, and then this one would have like um like the jaunty blue like um submariner type um you know where he got the three numbers like a propeller. So uh, and that's been giving me you know fifty nine fifty nine yep. It's actually about 15 seconds slow, but it's whether or not it'll stay this because after a while it seems to when it gets a bit more wind out on its spring, it seems to speed up just a fraction, which is irritating. So I've been working on that. All right, that's my amphibia, and I will have a quick gander at that. That still looks bloody good on the wrist. Now the bracelet I got from Commandersky.com. For 99 rubles, which is like silly money, but I like these because they're 22 mil all the way across. They got a nice mixture of brush and polish, and they do seem to go so well with these um, later 22 mil lugged uh, Vostok bracelets. But I was going to swap them over and that, and I thought to myself, like, do you know what? I like this as this is, like. It's a good, clean, honest, and you know, I mean, it, I mean, somebody in the oldies today, they said to me, oh, like your watch, isn't it unusual? Like, you know, see, people do notice these things, like, and um, it is unusual. I mean, a white radio room is, is, is an unusual model anyway, but I mean, it's military, it's Russian, uh, it's based on the Soviet design, it was a functional uh, design. Like, um, the whole point of what a radio room is, is that, like, if you've got, like, you know, you've got an hour clock, it would have a big hour clock on the wall in the radio rooms, right, with these, like, kind of four, like, um, what's it, bars of uh, red, and base, basically, if, in the, every single watch commander radio room across the Soviet Empire would have one set to the same time. So four times an hour, they would go silent so that they can hear distress messages um, from like downed pilots or stricken subs or something, you know, calling out for help, like, you know, over the radio system. And um, so like every, for, for like, you know, for every few minutes, like every like um, 15 minutes would be spent just listening out for distress. And if a distress is heard, then a command would come over for all other radios to shatter to, to cease until, like, you know, like an, uh, a fix and um, a rescue mission could be, like, you know. I mean, like a lot of Soviet things, it was functional and it was useful. I, it was a very useful way of, like, keeping track on their, like, stricken craft and ships and stuff like that. So, there you go. And that would be on like all three, but like Russia, like America, had its own military radio net and its own military radio, um, military satellites as well. So, um, and anybody found chattering away, like on um, the radio during the red bars, like you know, would get seriously reprimanded. So, 
So there we go. I'll take it from there and we'll take it to the up view. See you up there. Right, I'm not going to linger too much. There's a gratuitous shot of the um, 156 or M62. Gratuitous shot on uh, the YM92. Right, you'll have to like, you know, decide in the comments below which one you think is the better one. Right, as I say about, like, look at that. Like, I mean, you know, which one do you think's best? Which one won the contest tonight? The YM92 or the YM62? Alright, my money's on the YM9, uh, YM62 because it's so bloody rare. Like, you know, now all I've got to do is get the VX42 version of this and I'll be double thumbs up. So, that's now back where it should be. Like, it's probably where I leave it, like, near stuff, like other magnetised watches, and it just picks it up. So, like, you know, so take care of your mechanical watches. I've got some nice stuff coming in. I've got uh, a Seiko. 8v20 dancing hands watch coming in in its original bracelet and it's all its glory i mean i'm very pleased with that it's a bloody rare watch that is like it's as rare as one of these like so like, i will leave that with you i'm not going to waffle on too much like like keep on like liking and sharing and thumbs up and all that like you know the quicker we get the 250 like um what's it subscribers that's when i will start my um what's it my giveaway like you know and there's going to be some really nice gear in it trust me this one i've been looking through today and what i'm going to blow like, you know and i've got i've got basically the 12 that's going on like you know all working all ready to go so all we've got to do 250 subscribers all right like and share subscribe leave a comment like ignore somebody called gary dignam like he's a troll that lives somewhere in south london or uh, you know he, he's just a bit dead low like you know and uh oh yeah dumb yeah got one of these off of ebay a little head shaver <laughs> and it works I do hate hair on my hair on my head. What do you do? You know? So I got that. I'll do a review of that. Like you know, now I've like like what should we say, rude tested it, and I will see you in the next one. Toodle pipski.